Well, I think it's kind of fair to say that things haven't gone exactly as hoped for the Cleveland Browns up until this point of the season. Now granted, it's not like they've been a mess. I mean, they're 1-2 and two and they just barely lost to the Rams who were in the Super Bowl last year. So, they're definitely far from a bad team by any means. But when expectations, especially on offense, were so high, the fact that the offense has kind of faltered a little bit through three weeks is a little bit discouraging. And so one of the guys who has been receiving blame has been Baker Mayfield. I mean, if you look at his numbers, just, you know, three touchdowns, five interceptions. That's not great. Not to mention a yards per attempt of just 7.4 and a passer rating of 70.3. None of those are particularly great numbers, but keep in mind, it's a small sample size. It's only been three games. That's just kind of the nature of football. You have one bad game and this early in the season, and then it's going to look like your numbers are way worse than maybe they actually are. You don't want to be a prisoner of the moment. You don't want to sit here and say, maybe Baker Mayfield is bad. I mean, no, these are problems we kind of expected Baker Mayfield to have going on into this season, and I've already broken them down in my first video about him. Does he have a tendency to try to force some throws that he probably shouldn't? Sure. Does he have a tendency to leave the pocket too early? Again, sure. But to me, Baker Mayfield is not the problem with the Cleveland Browns. Right now, one of the biggest problems I see is the play calling. I feel like Freddie Kitchens is not putting Baker in a position to succeed. And that's not to say that there hasn't been any good play calls. I actually think that plays like this are really where the Cleveland Browns thrive. Where they're going up against the cover 3 zone, and it's going to be a play action. And then they have Jarvis Landry running that route right there. So hopefully the linebackers get out of position, Landry can get open, and then do the rest of the work. He's a good receiver in open space. So that seems like that's a good play on paper. And after the ball is snapped, as you see, the linebackers, they're out of position right now. Meaning for Landry, this is absolutely a throw that Baker could make to him, and then he could pick up some yards. So Baker does make that throw, they're able to pick up a solid gain, and get the ball inside the 40s. So, good play there by Baker Mayfield and by Jarvis Landry, and a good play call. Honestly, that's kind of what you have to do against the Rams. What is the Rams' defense? They have a lot of talent in that front four, specifically with Aaron Donald, and they have some talent with their secondary as well. It's really their linebackers who have to attack. So that's a good play call, and I just wanted to kind of bring that up because there are ways that this Cleveland Browns offense can be effective against a defense like the Rams. I feel like Cleveland should have ran way more of those types of plays, especially later on in the game, but I can get into that in a second. Let's get into some of the questionable play calls, and the first play call I will talk about will be this one, because in my opinion, this is an inexcusable play call. It's 4th down and 9, with the ball on to 40, with 9 minutes and 43 seconds left in the 4th quarter, and you're currently down 4. So it's kind of that weird situation of, do you go for it or do you punt it away? You're in that awkward spot, and honestly... I don't hate the decision to go for it here. I really don't. Worst case scenario, you're giving the ball back in good field position, but not necessarily incredibly great field position. And even if LA does go down, get a couple first downs, and kick a field goal, well now you're still just down 7 and you still have a chance. So I don't hate this decision at all to go for it here. So it's a 3rd down and 9, that's the first down marker. So what is Cleveland going to do? Well, they're going to run a draw play, of course, because that's what you should do in this situation. I mean, obviously, they got so criticized for this decision. I think it's inexcusable. I do. But you know what? I'll play devil's advocate here for a second. I'll try to explain what Cleveland was maybe thinking. Because I think a lot of people are just wondering, why would you even consider doing something like this? Here's how this play is supposed to work for Cleveland. What you're going to do is have your right guard and right tackle each go up and block those two Rams right over there on the line, so that part you expect. And you also have your center move up to block that Ram right over there, and of course your receiver on the top half of the screen is going to be blocking his assigned man. But there's one really key problem with this play, I think, and it's going to be that there still is going to be a safety in the area, and not just any safety, that's Eric Weddle, a pretty smart safety. I mean, you know, he's getting up there in age, he's definitely maybe not what he once was, but he's still playing at a high level, and his intelligence is at an all-time high. But for Cleveland, the idea behind this is that this way, I mean, really you only have to rely on three guys making a block and then Chubb running the rest of the way. But of course, the problem is, with Eric Weddle right there, there should at the very least be an alert in this situation. At the very least, Baker should have something in his head of, okay, if I see that there's a safety who's playing pretty far in on the top half of the screen, then I just alert to something else, we go to a pass play, we don't do anything too fancy. So I guess so far I haven't been doing a great job of playing devil's advocate, but uh, I think that's the logic behind the play, is we only need a few to blocks to make this work, it can then work out alright. Chubb is a very good player, maybe even if something goes wrong, he can break a tackle and get the first down. But honestly, as much as I want to look at the opposite side and say maybe this is why Freddie Kitchens did it, it's just, it's not the correct play call. It's, it's honestly, to me, it's an inexcusable play call. 
Because for one thing, your offensive line had been getting beat pretty badly all night. I mean, if you look right now, already these guys, you only need three guys to make your blocks, and those three guys still haven't fully made their blocks right now. There's some trouble coming already for Chubb. And if you look at Weddle, he's breaking in right now. He realizes, okay, it's a run, time to break in and try to make a play. Chubb is able to get around the first ram, but no way he's getting past Weddle. They only gained two yards in that play, and it's just, it's just a mess, really. I know kind of anybody who's watching football can criticize that play, but that's honestly a big problem if anybody watching football could criticize a play call. I just think he overthought it. I do understand the thought process behind it, but football is a numbers thing. You really do have to just play the numbers and play what has the best chance of working. And on a play like that, what had the best chance of working was not a draw play. But that was just one play call. You know, anyone can make one play call wrong. You only have like 10 seconds to make these decisions. Sometimes you just make the wrong one. So... Okay, I won't beat him up on it too much. It was a bad play call. But there were plenty of calls that I just didn't like. And this one was another one, once again, in a big situation. It's a third down and 11 this time. So, okay, you need 11 yards. So, you gotta try to figure out some way to get 11 yards. And you're gonna be going up against zone coverage here. So, I mean, there's several things you could do in this situation if you are Cleveland. You obviously don't know going in you're gonna be going up against zone coverage. But you could still have a zone buster here and there. You know, maybe have a zone buster on the top half of the screen and then just have a curl route on the bottom half of the screen. Especially considering the fact that you have Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. You know, put Odell on the bottom half of the screen, have him run a curl route so that way if it's man coverage, he could get open. And then on the top half of the screen, you have some sort of a zone buster where then if it's zone coverage, you can have potentially someone else get open. And Baker Mayfield is good at making these pre-snap reads, so he would be able to tell if it's going to be man or zone. And then he would at least have a shot. Maybe that play doesn't work out, but that's probably what I would do in this situation. Of course, I'm not saying I would do it any better. Obviously, you know, we all sit here at home and think that we could do it way better. We couldn't. I truly believe that if you're calling plays at the NFL level, you're one of the top 100 or 150 football minds in the world. I mean, you're at that level at least. But for Kitchens, he's going to be running a concept. I just don't understand why. This is the play concept he will be running, which it can be somewhat effective against the cover two zone. Simply because you have two receivers running deep, there's only going to be one Ram who's deep who can cover him, plus you have another receiver which will cut in between what the two zones deep would cover. But since this is not cover two, this play just isn't going to work. So you're solely relying on this to be a cover two, and even if it was a cover two, that's no guarantee that this play works. Not to mention this play is going to take a long time to develop, and your offensive line hasn't given you much hope at this point. After the ball is snapped, as you see, I mean, really the only guy Baker Mayfield could throw to would be the Brown who's underneath, but of course, the first down marker is all the way over there, so he wouldn't be able to get the first down if Baker did throw it off to him. And if you look at the other three Cleveland Browns in the area, I mean, none of them are open. Maybe Baker could take a shot in that direction, but there's a much bigger chance it's an interception than it is going to be a catch, so he shouldn't take that shot, and he does a good job by not taking that shot. Also, at this point, the pressure is going to arrive. Baker is going to try to see if he can get some more time, but there's just nothing he can do when he gets sacked. He's just not making things easier on Baker Mayfield, which is what you have to do if you have a young quarterback. Make things easier for them. That's the whole reason you go out and get an offensive-minded head coach if you have a young quarterback, to try to make things easier on them. Then when you have the veteran quarterback, you go out and get the defensive-minded coach. That's kind of the way it works. And that wasn't something just an isolated incident. I actually thought that later in the game, they were doing it a lot, which isn't what they had to do. On the final drive, they were doing a lot of plays like this, but they didn't have to. I mean, what was working all night for them was giving Chubb the ball and then running some play actions over the middle. That was really what was working for them, was really being really effective for them. But like on this play, for example, what Cleveland is going to do is have the receivers run those routes right there. And so you say, okay, well, this isn't a terrible concept. I mean, as you see, it's going to be a cover three. So that actually doesn't seem like it's that bad of a concept. This is something you'll see relatively frequently. I mean, if you look at the top half of the screen with those two receivers running deep, this now means that Baker could potentially hit the underneath guy as he could potentially be wide open. And then also on the bottom half of the screen, an out route against the cover three. That's not a bad route. So Baker has options here. There's definitely things he can do. But here's why I have a problem with this play concept. It's that you're... Offensive linemen aren't that good. I mean, look what you'll see right when this ball is snapped. I mean, there's pressure coming from both sides for Baker Mayfield. He is in immediate trouble here. And if you look at the receivers, I mean, maybe some of these guys could get open, but they're just not at the point where they could potentially break and get open at this point. You still had two and a half minutes left in all three of your timeouts, so you didn't have to start going long here. They're trying to go long anyways, and in my opinion, it's a mistake because now Baker has nowhere to throw the ball to, and he's going to get sacked. And now, in fairness, they did get the ball down the field. They were able to get the ball inside the 10-yard line. So, you know, they had some plays that worked out well. I don't want to bash Kitchens too much. He made some mistakes, sure, but 
it wasn't like it was a total disaster on that drive, necessarily. I mean, they got the ball in the 5-yard line. You have to do something right if you're going to get the ball to the 5-yard line. Granted, I would say that those plays were kind of more of the talent bailing out kitchens, not the other way around, but... Anyways, let's get on to those final plays of the game. Because I definitely thought that there were some mistakes made by Kitchens as well. So, here's going to be the first play. They're going to go out in five wide and have those receivers run all of those routes right there. And I have no problem with this. I think this is a totally fine play call and it makes a lot of sense. You're going five wide, but you know what? In this situation, Bicker has to get the ball out anyways. So, you don't really need anybody else to actually block. So I think that's totally a smart decision. This is first down and goal, by the way. You have all three timeouts and plenty of time left. So you're really not in too much of a worry here. And so for Baker, he's going to look around. He's going to say, you know what? The route I like the best is going to be Jarvis Landry's route right there. That's the route I like the best. And this actually is going to be a cover zero. Baker obviously doesn't know that now, but he will find out that out very quickly. Meaning it's just one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board, and then six Rams are rushing the passer. So for Baker, he has no time to make a decision after a snap. He just has to pick a decision before the snap and then take that shot. And after the ball is snapped, if you notice, I mean, Landry, he's kind of a tough spot here. It's hard for him to get the inside leverage on his assigned man because his assigned man is doing a very good job of just sort of using his body as a weapon, staying in front of Landry, and there's not a lot Landry can do. You know that Baker's going to have to get this ball off quickly, so if you can simply just slow down Landry, then he won't be able to get into this play. But that's totally fine. That's something that's totally okay to do on first down. This tells you several things. For one thing, it lets you know that the Rams are playing man coverage here. So you could potentially run the ball and gain some yards here. That's what I think I would have done. I think now would have actually been the perfect time for that draw play. You know, because you only need five yards. And also, if you only get three, that's still a good play. Because now it's going to be a third down. And you only need two yards. But also, let's just break down what the Browns did. First, they tried a bootleg play that didn't work. And then they're going to try this play. This is going back to a similar situation where, once again, it is going to be five wide. And so, what would you do at this point? You already know it's probably going to be man coverage, so create some kind of play concept that's designed to beat man coverage. Personally, I think the obvious thing to do here is a pick play. That makes a ton of sense because, again, even if you don't get all five yards, you'll at least get a few yards and get the ball very close to the goal line, setting up an easier fourth down situation. Not to mention, you have Odo Beckham Jr., who's borderline unstoppable in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, so that's what I personally would have done. Although also worth mentioning, as you see on the screen, this is not a one-on-one -on -one matchup at this point. There's actually a couple of double teams going on right now. They're trying to take away the Browns away from the middle of the field, which makes sense because that is where Baker loves to throw the ball to. So for me, if I'm Freddie Kitchens, I'm running a pick play to the outside, to the, the sidelines here, but... That's not what uh, Cleveland is going to do. They want to work the middle of the field. And so they're going to be running these routes right there. And really they're going to have an emphasis on those two routes. So now you have a couple of options here. On one hand, Odell Beckham Jr. is an elite level receiver. He's, if you have a top five wide receiver list, you can't leave him off it. He's clearly on that level. Meanwhile, Demetrius Harris clearly isn't quite that level, but he's also 6'7". So for Baker Mayfield, he could potentially throw a jump ball and that could potentially work. But again, Baker has to make his decision beforehand on this one. He can't really try to be making second reads on this play. And so after the ball is snapped, Demetrius Harris right there, he's not really that open. But again, it's a height thing. There will be a small window for Baker to try to fit it through. Meanwhile, on the bottom half of the screen, if you look at Odell, he pulled off an insane move that was actually so good that it caused the Ram to fall down on the ground. If Baker was looking in that direction, I mean, that's easily a touchdown, no doubt about it. But again... That's me being a bit results-oriented. I do understand the logic behind throwing it to Harris or throwing it to Odell. Personally, I still would have tried to fit it to Odell at some point during that play, but okay, they didn't want to do it. They wanted to give it to Harris, and he does try to fit it through that window to Harris, but there really was no window. That was good coverage, which is kind of expected when you have a guy who's tall, but maybe not as good of a route runner as some of your other players. That play only had a small percentage chance of working, and personally, I kind of do feel like if you are going to have Harris be the guy you're going to throw to, why not put him on the outside and throw a fade, but that's not what they wanted to do, so okay. I don't love that play call, I won't bash it too much. Mostly because, okay, now you know what the Rams are almost definitely going to do. There's almost definitely going to be some double teams that take away the middle of the field, and it's almost definitely going to be man coverage. And as you see, it is once again going to be man coverage with a couple of double teams to take away the middle of the field. And so what is this creative play call for Cleveland? What are they going to be doing different on this one? Well, it's kind of more of the same. More guys cutting into the middle of the field with a receiver running deep. There's really not too much here. The route I really hate is actually Odell's route. Odell was the second receiver to the bottom half of the screen. If you're going bottom to up, he would be the second one. He's the one cutting into the middle of the screen. I really do not like that route at all because you know he's going to be double teamed. If you're going to double team guys, Odell's going to be one of the guys you're going to double team. And he's cutting in and usually these double teams are designed to take away the middle of the field. 
So in doing that, you've just taken away your best player. So I don't understand the point of that, really, in my opinion. So after the ball is snapped, that's the brown he wants to hit, but he doesn't have time. I mean, again, you have one guy who doesn't even have a cut in his route. That's your first read. I mean, that's not going to work too often. Meanwhile, there was kind of a pick play on the top half of the screen, although it's cutting in, which again, I don't really love that because clearly they're designed to take away the middle of the field and force you to the outside. But even with that, at this point, the pick play is just tough to pull off because it's third down and you need a touchdown here. You can't afford to gain only four yards. I mean, with pressure coming, I would still advise Baker to just make the throw now or honestly try to run it up the middle and see if he can get a touchdown that way. Both were possibilities. Although, honestly, at that point, for Freddie Kitchens, you're expecting Baker Mayfield to bail you out at that point, which isn't what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put Baker Mayfield in a situation to succeed. Instead, you're kind of just hoping that he'll just be able to bail you out. Baker ran outside the pocket. He tried to just throw one up there just because at that point you have to just try something, but it didn't work out. Baker got a lot of heat and some of it deserved, but in my opinion, Freddie Kitchens just isn't putting Baker in a situation to succeed. He just isn't. He's not doing a terrible job. Some of these plays are getting blown out of proportion. I mean, how many times have we seen a coach just screw up the end game like that, to screw up those last few play calls? It happens, but at the same time, part of me feels like you can't let that happen if you're going to win a Super Bowl. And for the Cleveland Browns, who have their minds set on potentially doing some real damage, I mean, that's kind of what you have to avoid. Because there were some plays that were working, you know, Nick Chubb was doing a very good job all night, the Rams don't have the best run defense, and then also play actions were really working. I know you can't do that every play, but you can do it a lot more than they did, especially when it really mattered. I mean, if they ran the ball on first down and goal and got three yards and then ran a play action, I almost guarantee they're getting a touchdown on that play. I mean, that's just, that's what you should have done in that situation. I feel like too many coaches often want to do their own thing as opposed to do the thing that is working the best during that game. I feel like Freddie Kitchens, he didn't coach the best game in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. What did you guys think of Freddie Kitchens' performance? Let me know. You know, I always love hearing from you guys, and as always, thanks for watching.